Duran Premium Cigars, one of the fastest growing boutique cigar companies, providing smokers a portal into the old Cuban tradition of perfect balance and the lost art of progressive flavor construction. Roberto Palayo Duran began his career in tobacco over two decades ago in Havana, where his reputation grew within Cuban circles. The creation of Duran Premium Cigars has given Roberto the platform to introduce a series of cigars that offer the same quality, construction, and detail which he perfected while in Cuba. Brands include the ultra premium Roberto P. Duran Premium Cigar Series, Azan Cigars, Nea, and Baracoa. Duran Cigars uses a seed to humidor approach as all tobacco is grown in their farms and rolled in their factory in Esteli, Nicaragua. Rollers have been carefully chosen to carry out Roberto's precise method to ensure progressive flavor in each cigar. Duran Cigars invites you to make their premium your standard. Experience the world through the eyes of an icon with the new Macanudo Inspirado line. Created for a global palette, Macanudo Inspirado defies convention. Handcrafted with the world's finest tobaccos, Inspirado delivers a unique international smoking experience. Find Inspirado Orange at fine tobaccos everywhere and Inspirado Black online and in your favorite catalogs. Ready to be inspired? Check out Macanudo Inspirado now at macanudo.com. CAO has brought you iconic cigars over the years. Brazilian, Italian, La Traviata, done in a playful nature with a unique twist. Travel to the exciting world of CAO and back in just under an hour with any of the groundbreaking CAO world blends. Test the boundaries of style with new age brands in the 95 rated flathead. Honor the past with new classics like Pilon. Treat your palate to an array of flavors with Soul Fire and Moon Trance. At CAO, the experiences are limitless. So what's your next move? <laughs> hey, Paul, what's up? What's up, Mark? I, did you hear about the new cigar that's coming out? Which one is that? There's like 800 new ones every week. The one with the Connecticut Broadleaf wrapper. Oh, really? I love Connecticut Broadleaf. Which, uh, who makes it? Um, I think it's Nicaraguan. So Nicaraguan binder and filler, or it's made in a factory in Nicaragua? Uh, I always have to Google these, and it's taking me like an hour to find out what it is. If this is a frequent conversation with your cigar buddies, look no further than Stogie Geeks News, the only cigar news podcast on the internet. Will Cooper, the man behind Cigar-Coop.com, and Paul Asadorian from the Stogie Geeks produce a weekly show covering the latest cigar news, new blends, cigar manufacturer announcements, and more. Subscribe to the video version on YouTube or get the audio version in your favorite podcast catcher. Head on over to stogienews.tv to subscribe today. Saga Cigars, makers of the Saga Golden Age. The Golden Age is a cigar that takes you back to the classic days of cigar smoking. Through the six generations of experience by the Reyes family, the Saga Golden Age delivers a timeless blend that uses the nobility of the tobacco to bring you the perfect balance of power and flavor. It narrates better than words the history of a family's tradition in tobacco, delivering a cigar much like the ones they used to smoke in the times of Hemingway. Saga Golden Age is a full-bodied, full-flavored Dominican Puro. With tobaccos from one farm, the blend features a Corojo 2006 wrapper and filler from original Cuban seeds grown in the Dominican Republic. Available in four sizes at an affordable price, the Saga Golden Age is sure to please and take you back on a journey to yesteryear. Brought to you by Rocky Patel Premium Cigars, the Tabacero by Hamlet Paredes, developed and blended by Cuban master of tobacco, Hamlet Paredes. This cigar is an exciting addition to the Patel family, featuring traditional and rare sizes hand-picked by Hamlet himself. Smoke Tabacero by Hamlet Paredes today. For more information, visit them on the web at RockyPatel.com and be sure to follow Rocky Patel Premium Cigars on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Welcome back to the Stogie Geek Show, episode 195. Will Cooper, uh, manning the controls from Studio C in North Carolina. Um, Mark and the team uh, handling the controls up in uh, the, the G-Unit Studios powered by Billiger, uh, North America. And on the line with us via Skype, uh, Mr. Jonathan David of Toasted Foot. We are having our IPCPR extravaganza um, and before I kind of get into that, um, we're going to get into our, some of our IPCPR smokes, which um, we'll talk about. I um, want to just mention that there is a contest. Uh, I will be announcing a contest at the end of this segment. Two five-packs of IPCPR cigars that have been released at the show uh, with a smoke-naked T-shirt. So 
So uh, we just got, I just got, I am now in possession of all the smoke naked t-shirts here in North Carolina. So <laughs> I don't know what I'm, where I'm going to put them. So I need to give some of them away. So, um, but this is where we're going to talk about um, our smokes of the week. Now, normally what we do in this segment, J.D., is Paul and I talk about what we've smoked. But I think given uh, – this is why I'm kind of really glad you're here because uh, Paul wasn't at the show this year where we can kind of talk about those IPCPR um, c- cigars. And then I think we'll unveil what our smoke of the show was. Does that sound good? Sounds good. I have five. How many do you have? Uh, I can do five. Okay. Okay. Um. So why don't, why don't I'll let you kick it off? Well, I will say, if you need to get rid of a smoke naked T-shirt, I'll trade you a full wheel T-shirt for a uh, smoke naked T-shirt. Oh no, you, 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 everyone in the CMA is getting shirts. So yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So don't worry about that. Yeah. So we'll have to I'll have to get your address too to get you that. But uh, uh, things from the IPCPR cigars that impressed me, um, obviously. So we'll do, and what we'll do is we'll do one at a time. We'll kind of do a back and forth. Okay. Um, I would say the Tabernacle from Melillo. Now I didn't smoke it yet because I was my palate was shot, and then it was the, I wanted to let it humidify. So I'm really curious to hear about this. Well, it was nice to see him go back to Connecticut Broadleaf. It's uh, a little Liga esque to me. It's you know a full bodied cigar. I thought that um, it was a good complement to the El Wense. I don't think it's uh, mind blowing. Well, out of this, word, I thought the El Wednesday was a phenomenal cigar. It was our number two cigar of the year, and it probably would have been number one if it weren't for the Skyflower. Um, but I think the Tabernacle was one of the uh, better shows or cigars of the show. And that's the AJ Fernandez made cigar. Yep, which I think AJ is, you know, on a roll right now. You know, you mentioned El Wednesday for a second. Um, And then I'm going to talk about a cigar kind of along the same lines of what Nick Malolo did. Do you think that was a, you know, him going with El Wawense, do you think that was the right move for him to come out with something, you know, very different as opposed to going to his Broadleaf roots first? Uh, Yeah, definitely. You know, um, the Saka's cigar was not the Liga, but it was very Liga-esque, you know. Whereas uh, going completely different to me made uh, the El Wawense, it it was not what you were expecting, one. And two, it was just a damn good cigar. Um, It was one that uh, it came into the shop here and uh, it hadn't gotten priced or on the shelf yet. And I, I probably went through half a box just smoking singles saying, hey, put this on me when I you price them. I um I really like the El Wawense in the Churchill size. Yes, that's the one I, I loved. I also thought, the second I smoked it, I said, man, I'd love to try this in a Lancero. And uh, Nick did for a while a Lancero that was an event-only cigar. Now he's actually selling it. And um, I did get one at the show. And I did smoke it. Um, it was Friggin' phenomenal. Uh, I have that one as well. Yeah, I have that one as well. That, that was a damn good cigar. Now, yeah, so he said, is that remaining event only? I forgot what he said on that. No, I, he is going to sell it to some shops. I don't yeah. know how many. I don't know who's carrying it. My assumption would be Stogie's here is going to get it because of the Lance Arrow uh, thing going on here. But um, <laughs> that was a phenomenal. Yeah, that, that's true. Um, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kind of keep with the theme here um but i'm gonna go steve saka and i'm gonna go with me carita uh which is steve's connecticut broadleaf that he came out with this year um and it's a connecticut broadleaf over nicaraguan binder and filler and uh, i i had this as a prediction to be one of the hottest cigars at the show even over nick's and i think i missed it i think nick's clearly was like I said, I, I, that was a missed prediction because I think Nick certainly should have been on that list. Um, but I, I went with, but I think Steve's cigar, uh, Steve said it sold very, very well at the show. He had samples of it this year, which I think helped. He didn't have samples of Sober Mesa. Um, this is nothing Sober Mesa like. It's his Liga esque cigar. Um, it was very good. 
Um, I smoked the side. It's called Anko Corta, which is a 5 by 52 reasonably priced at eight seventy five. dollars um, The thing about this cigar, it had some of the meatiness and the chewiness of a Liga 9. Um, it had some of the spice component. Um, it had an incredible aroma. If you're one to really like an aroma off this cigar, this is as good an aroma as I've gotten off a of Connecticut Broadleaf. Um, and I, I, now I smoked this with Loomis and June from Developing Palettes, who they came up with a really interesting strategy how to end the day. You find a booth with a couch, and you go have a smoke there. <laughs> So we, we kind of smoked it together. I don't remember. I don't know what their thoughts were specifically, um, other than I guess Steve Saka let Loomis back in the booth right now. So. Yeah, I would I would definitely agree. Find a couch and smoke. Yeah, find a couch and smoke, uh, and then you hang out. But very very good cigar. I think if people are looking for something Liga esque from Steve, but not it's not a duplicate of a Liga Nine, is what I'll say. It, uh, I'd say it's in the medium plus range, this cigar. It's not overpowering, but it's got more kick than the Sober Mesa did. Different cigar as well. Um, I'm curious to see how this is going to age out. Because Liga 9s don't age well, in my opinion. They tend to, you have to smoke them when you get them. But, so I'm curious to see what the long-term aging is on this cigar. But ver- very good cigar now. For folks, I'm not going to give Stogie Geeks ratings tonight um, because I don't believe in rating a cigar off the show floor. I'm just going to kind of tell you this was a very impressive cigar, and I think it's going to do extremely well for Steve. I would agree with you on that. The um, rating cigars off the show floor, especially because in Vegas, you know, it's very dry, just like in New Orleans last year, very humid. Um, they've been in people's bags and suitcases and boxes being traveled. So, uh, you know, it's not necessarily representative of what's going to be on the shelf. Yep. I have a very good travel humidor. There is a couple of cigars that are getting reviewed off the shelf floor um, because I was asked to. And only if I'm asked to will it be, but I kind of caveat it saying it's a shelf floor sample. Um, but um, in general, I don't review cigars. I I don't find them. I mean, this is kind of, I don't want to miss on snob. I just don't find the reviews to be accurate from the shelf floor. I just don't. Um, just because I, and I've seen, I mean, do you remember when the original room 101 came out at the show years ago? And then that was a great cigar. That was a cigar everyone was talking about. And when the final product came out, nothing like what was on the show floor. Yeah. So that was enough of, you know, but there are people I know who, and I, I don't fault people for reviewing it. Um, that's their choice. It's just not what I choose to do. Okay. What else you got? Um, I would say the uh, Cornelius and Anthony uh, Vengaza. Okay. That was a, a great medium full stick from, uh, es- it's made at Espinosa at Lizona. Um, there was a, a good deal of pepper to that cigar. It was, um, it was one of them that I was very, very impressed with. I had liked their other stuff. Uh, so far, I'm not sure. I haven't made up my mind because it was a show sample. But um, I would say that's that might be the best cigar they made or close to it. Um, I smoked it. I think, it's, I think it could have all the potential to be the best cigar they made. Uh, Daddy Mac was very good. I like Daddy Mac. Cornelius, I found certain sizes better than others. Uh, but it's classic El Titan de Bronze Cornelius. But this Daddy, um, excuse me, Ben Gaza came out of um, the Lazona factory. Um, it's a powerhouse of a cigar. There's no question about it. It's got some spice. It's got some, it's got some uh, rocket fuel in it, so to speak. I think it was a very well-received cigar from a lot of people as well. Um, so I think from that standpoint, um, yeah, I would, I would probably put that one. Um, that, that, I, actually, I knew that was on your list, so I didn't put it on my list. Okay. But I, 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 yeah, that was the only reason why I didn't put it on the list. But I did know that one was on your list. Uh, but yeah, good, good, really, really good cigar. Um, I'll also kind of um, go along those lines again. Um, and I smoked the uh, the new cigar by Moya Ruiz, uh, the Dim Mac, which is going on Cigar Dojo on. Friday, I think, for sale. Or the early sales going to the Cigar Dojo community. Um, so the Dim Mac is 
for folks who don't know what Moya Ruiz does is every year they come out with a um, a cigar that they do in tribute to the Cigar Dojo community uh, because a lot of their company got a really good, they kind of got a good, uh, they got behind the, the company early on in the Dojo community. So they've done that nunchuck cigar. Last year they did the um, the Chinese finger trap, the, the controversial uh, packaging around that. Good, great cigar. Um, this year they came out with the cigar. Um, it's called uh, the Dim Mac, which from my understanding is a martial arts technique that uh, you use a single blow to the hand, and based on however you execute that, it's said to cause a delayed death. <laughs> um, so, um, and typically I, I've heard it's the last resort in a, in a martial arts battle, so to speak. Um, Danny Moya has kind of said it's also a not so subtle message to the FDA on their overbearing regulations as well. Um, and the Dim Mac is much more of a, compared to Chinese Finger Trap, which had some of the interesting packaging and Nunchuck, which was innovation, so to speak, with those connected cigars. This is more of a traditional cigar, Ecuadorian Habano wrapper, uh, Nicaraguan uh, binder. And it's a uh, filler's got Dominican and Nicaraguan, so I think it's the first Moya Ruiz cigar to put a little Dominican tobacco in that thing. Um, I, it's in one size of five by fifty-four robusto. Uh, this cigar is, I would say, as powerful as the Benganza. Um, it's it's very flavorful. It's got a uh, a nice red pepper note that stands out on that thing, which um, but it never becomes a it's it's got enough red pepper if you want some spice, but at the same time it's not going to be overpowering on the palate. Red pepper. There's a citrus note, which sometimes can be a sign of youngness. I don't think it's a sign of youngness with this cigar. I think it's actually very good. And there's a kind of a bready note on this thing, uh, along with a nice overall natural tobacco feel. Um, it's strong. I think it's Venganza strong. It, it, um, I have to, I'd have to smoke them back to back to say which is better, but I think you're you're very close with that. You know, Danny Moyo likes those those strong cigars. So um, this is a very, very good release by them. Um, I mean, it, it is, is it, all these cigars I'm talking about, these are cigars I'm going to go back and purchase afterwards. So they're, they're definitely worthy of purchasing it. And they'll probably, you know, you know whether they'll be, mul- they'll probably be worthy of multiple purchases as well. Did you get that sample at all from them? Uh, I do have one, yes. Okay. I have to smoke it. Okay. Yeah, I'm kind of curious. Uh, especially, it, it's a different smoke than the Mingazzo. Uh, but again, Espinosa can, you know, they've put out powerful smokes before. I didn't think La Bamba was an ultimately powerful smoke compared to Venganza and um, Dim Mac. I think the La Bamba sneaks up on them. Yeah. I think that's fair. I think it's fair to I say. I think it's less power up front and it more sneaks up on you over time. Yep. Yep. Okay, what else you got? Um, well, since we're on Espinosa, uh, I have one cigar that's not from the IPCPR, which is the cigar I brought with me to the IPCPR. Okay. The uh, Oranja Lancer. Okay. Because cool. this thing, the uh, Espinosa Oranja Reserva, was our cigar of the year in, or number two cigar of uh, 2014. And I thought it was a phenomenal cigar. Cigar aficionado made their top 25 this year. Uh, they're a little late on the uptake because it made everybody on lines list last the year before. But hey, um, this is better than that cigar. And uh, I tend not to like to smoke on the show floor stuff that I'm given unless it's with somebody that's like, hey, smoke this with me. Um, just because you want to try it when you get home and you haven't had a bunch of other cigars. Um, this is what I brought with me and smoked the whole time. Uh, and if, I know Jorge did the same thing. Uh, this, no, sir. if it's not the best of that H town series, it's the second best. Wow. I mean, like, there's some uh, big the one's a great cigar, so it's very hard to, to say it's better than that, but this is, um, damn close. That's, that's some very big company you talk. Now I've had the perfecto they did with that for the socio. Uh, which was very good. I've had the Caixa, uh, which is the box press Laurent's they did, and I've had um, probably every one of the sizes. Um, that's a cigar that I feel it, it works better in sizes than others. I haven't had the Lancero, but I'll say I can I can get it because that wrapper I think is the real key to that whole cigar. Um, 
So I remember when that cigar came out, I was a little late to the game when it, I, I wasn't blown away on the show floor about it for whatever reason. And everyone was talking about that cigar after the show. When I went back and revisited it, I got it. Well, the other great thing about this cigar, as opposed to the other Laranjas, is most of the other sizes run you about 10 bucks, uh, 10 to $11, depending on where you live. Uh, this is 850 very reasonable. Uh, I mean, for a, a limited production Lancero, that's uh, that's fairly impressive price. Uh, there's other H towns that run in the ten dollar range, uh, like the Tatuaje and the Illusions nine something. Uh, but this is eight fifty, so it's a, a reasonably priced damn good cigar. The, yeah, most of those most of those H towns, if not all of them, have been very reasonably priced. I remember the. The Room 101, they've all been very reasonably priced for a labor-intensive cigar. Yeah, I mean, this is not an easy size to roll. No. Uh, it's pretty easy to screw up. Yeah, no, um, def- you know, a lot of times with Lanceros, they, this is what I see with Lanceros, and, and Jorge's probably getting mad at uh, This is why I get critical of Lanceros. But he's, but he's kind of, for the most part, I think he's done a good job with most of the releases with this. You either have to pull out a fuller leaf, to keep it at a 38 or um, you got to take it up to a 40 or 42. Um, but for the most part, I think in some and I've seen it when you take the filler leaf out, it doesn't work. I, it's something different about it. But, you know, in general, I think Jorge, he's created some, you know, some of those sizes have definitely held up, you know, again, going back to the, I keep going back to the room one on one, the Nick Apuro from Alex Bradley was really good. Um, so I think, I think from that perspective, um, really good as far as uh, Lancero goes. Well, a lot of times the filler leaf you lose is the Lajero, which then makes the cigar burn faster. Yep. Because it's lacking that slow burning Lajero. Yeah, no, I agree. I remember when they came out with uh, a Guillermo Leon signature Lancero for Drapers in uh, the D.C. area. It was a shop exclusive of this, and I love the Guillermo Leon signature blend. But when that went down to a Lancero, I mean, it just did not work. It was it was missing something. I don't know what it was. So it it just so it's not just sometimes you know I know there's a lot of people they get all passionate about Lancero. It's got to be the blend's got to work with a Lancero too. And I think Corgi's done a really good job as a whole with that. Oh yeah, definitely. Yep. So, so and, what's the next cigar coop? I'm gonna have a Lancero because uh, that's. It's kind of weird how so I, I mean, I have rearranged the order a bit to time these out, but um, I did have a Lancero on the list. Um, and this is from M. Bombay. Um, and it is the M. Bombay Vintage Reserve uh, 1973, uh, Lancero 1973. Um, this is a blend that Mel Shaw's put together. Um, it features that Ecuadorian Desfilorado wrapper a Dominican binder, and, and a combination of Dominican and Peruvian filler. Um, as the name indicates, um, the Vintage Reserve lines, what Mel put, he, he uses it to put aged tobaccos in. He says there's some very old components to this filler, um, pre-1970. So that, that's what Mel's saying. Uh, I'm still a little confused where the 73 name comes from, to be honest with you, because the tobacco is supposedly old, older than 73. Um, but, um, it's, what's unique about this couple of unique features about this Lancero. Um, it's in that M Bombay super Lancero format. So Mel's Lanceros are eight and a half inches, uh, by 38, which is what this is. Um, and the second thing is it is, uh, got a long cedar sleeve going up from the footer to the band. So I'd say there's probably about a six inch sleeve on this thing of cedar. Um, what I'll say is Mel, when I ask Mel about these filler components, he, his word, he hands me the cigar, he says, smoke it. I smoked the whole thing at his booth, which I never really do. Um, fantastic cigar. Um, it's just a flavor bomb is what I'll say. Works, this is a cigar. It works great with the, um, Lancero, um, format. I thought it was, um, you know, I, I actually got, I actually nubbed that thing. I actually, which is very rare. I'll do that at the, at the trade show. And, um, do I taste, is there aged tobacco in there? 
Um, yeah, there's no question there's H tobacco in there. So, uh, it's kind of one of those things if you, uh, if, you know, if you want to know, you know, what something, you know, I've had some of these aged tobacco cigars and I, I don't get it. There's definitely something in this cigar that I would say is aged. It's a completely different blend than what Mel's done before. Um, because the Casera blend uses a, a Havana, Ecuadorian Havana minder. So it's a, it's an all new blend that he's done for this. Um, I think it's going to do real well for him. It is in the, it is in the box. I noticed too. Um, so, uh, definitely look for this cigar. I think it's heading to retailers, right now um but disclaimer mel is a sponsor of stogie geeks and cigar coop but um as we tell everyone smoke the cigar or let us know what you think and we've got a lot of good feedback from mel stuff well mel actually advertises with us too so we'll Thank, yeah, and, and by the way well, you know, I, can well, i say something well, i gotta say something yeah. yeah this is where our cigar media works together so you know jd who had him as a sponsor first recommended us and we really appreciate that no thanks Coop. but yeah Yep. If I was going to advertise on somebody's site, I'd make sure it was Cigar Coop. So. Thank you. I had to get that in. So go ahead. Say what you're going to say. I apologize. But that was actually the first cigar I smoked of the show. And uh, like you, my opinion was pretty much right in line with yours. And uh, I was pretty impressed with it. I think it's going to – I mean, Lanceros don't always do well outside of Stogies of Houston. But uh, I think that one will do uh, okay. No, I agree. You know, when I start, and Mel's Lanceros are very good, by the way. Uh, I haven't had a one. Lancero is a great. Oh, Moral is is absolutely one of my favorites. You know, I think what Mel did, I mean, to me, there was a lot of, there was, there was similarities to the Casero with this, but it was different. And when I couldn't figure out what was different, he put a Dominican binder on this cigar as opposed to the Habana uh, binder. And I think that amped it up a bit. Um, That's just my guess. I haven't asked Mel that, but I think, you know, because the aged tobacco was probably kind of mellow, I assume. And Peruvian tobacco is not very strong either. But, you know, I'd say it's like a medium cigar. Um, maybe medium minus it's on the side, but a lot of flavor. Yeah, I'd say it's on the milder side of medium. Yeah. And this was, I had this as a first cigar of the day as well, but it wasn't the first cigar of the show. Yeah, it was my first of that first day of the show. Yeah. Um, did you see, too, he's got um, the Gaja Brazilians coming out? And yes. Um, I saw it on display, and I saw the pictures. That's about it. Yep. Uh, so, it, it, yeah, he's got that coming out in the torpedo. Uh, the funny thing, I look, I get in the booth, he shows me the, the, the you know, the 1970s. I start looking at the gadgets, right? I see, and I see the torpedo, and then I go, okay, Mel, you didn't put this in here with a darker wrapper by accident. <laughs> yeah. And that's when he started telling me about the Brazilian uh, one coming out. Well, we kind of pretty much had the same conversation. Yep. <laughs> yeah, no, so that's a, yeah, definitely. I think that, yeah, I said, I think this 1973 is heading to stores now. So check it out. Okay, what else you got? Um, well, I then have to say, I don't have anything that else from M Bombay, so I can't copy you. Uh, but I would say my, my next stick would be the uh, Davidoff uh, Yamasa. Now, I spoke that before the show. So I didn't put it on my list, but yeah, I'm curious. Which size did you I actually know? bought it during the show from the Davidoff kiosk. At the I, I had gotten a sample from them, but I didn't take it with me, and I went and bought it at the kiosk as well before the trade show started. And but, uh, I ended up buying a bunch more of them from the kiosk <laughs> because the forty they got they're like forty dollars some of them were there. Yeah, well, you know. Uh, which size? Which Vegas? size did you buy? Uh, I like the Toro. See, I, was uh, Bell, I, I went with Bellicoso with that one. I smoked a couple different sizes. I liked, uh, I liked the Toro. Um, I think that is uh, a winner. It was one of the cigars that people were talking about. Uh, everybody, even guys I know that don't like Davidoff, seem to like that cigar. It, um, it made up for a lot of missteps with the Escurio from last year. Uh, they're in more normal sizes because uh, the uh, the Escurio came in some very odd sizes, um, and uh, this is much more normal sizes. It's a uh, little reminiscent of the Nicaraguan, which kind of blew everybody's mind when that came out. And uh, you know, with the uh, Dominican uh, Yamasa 
uh, wrapper and binder, it, it has a little bit of a kick to it, too. It, um, Ascurio, I'll say this. The Robusto Tubo, I loved it. The rest of the sizes, and I just recently had the Corona Gorda they, they released, and I haven't, the rest of the sizes have not done it for me. But they went back to their roots with this cigar. Uh, the Yamas, they've used Yamas at Tobacco before, but they haven't built a brand uh, to the point like they've done with this. Uh, the, the, the Purity Oro had a Yamas a wrapper, as well as some of the limited. But I think I that's that cigar. Yeah. Now, getting rid of that, I mean, that was well, one of my favorite tap offs of all time. You know, of, of, I'll tell you what, of all the discontinuations that I've seen, you know, and I could put a couple of floor things a few years ago, but now they're making it back. But that was a big surprise. That was a real big surprise to see that one fall out, that line. Um, but they're very, they're very protective of the appointed merchant model where they don't, you know, they have these display units. And if, if you're going to fit X number of facings, that's what it's going to be. So something had to, you know, they, obviously they were launching a new line and something had to go. Yep. So, Coop, what do you got up next? Um, my next one is the Casa Fernandez Aganorsa, Connecticut. And I'm just going to say I don't know how this cigar is flying under the radar. I have not talked to a lot of people that went to the Casa Fernandez uh, booth. Um, but what I will say is this is a cigar you need to smoke. Um, it is a box press Connecticut. And what you need to understand with Casa Fernandez, um, they are a company that works with three rappers, Corojo, Criollo, and San Andreas. And that's pretty much what they've worked with for years, as well as they've worked with, with their clients for years. Um, Connecticut's kind of new ground, and they've done a few soft launches of Connecticut. I know they did one for Thompson's. Um, but now they did one for Kyle, um, and now Dion's got to connect with this one's their own, and they're actually calling this, they're actually calling this the Agonarsa. They're not, they're calling it, they're branding it Agonarsa, which um, you know, Agonarsa is the tobacco that goes into you know, you, you, it's their signature tobacco. Warp uses it in the Sky Flower. Uh, it, it's the farms that they have. Um, this thing's an absolute flavor bomb, and it's what I would expect. It's got some kick. It's one of these Connecticut's that's going to have a little kick to it. Um, I'll show a lot more kick to it, is what I'll say. Um, I smoked the um, the Robusto to five and a quarter by 50. Uh, 50. Um, Nub this thing to the limit. Um, in my opinion, if you're looking for that Connecticut with attitude in a box press format, um, and you just don't, you know, I hear a lot of these things, oh, this is not your fault, this Connecticut, uh, this is not the same Connecticut. This one's one of these cigars. It is not the I, Paul will probably Paul after the is a big Connecticut smoker will probably hate this cigar because it's not a traditional Connecticut. Um, I can't wait to get this cigar uh, when it hits the shelves. And for folks, uh, I would definitely recommend. Um, I would definitely recommend uh, smoking it. Well, you know the cigar that's not one of my five, and it wasn't my PCPR cigar, but is along those lines when it comes to. Not your father's Connecticut is the uh, the Southern Draw Connecticut's. Oh, he did a great that's disclosure. They're now an advertiser on our site, but uh, I actually tried it before, and I was worried I might be biased because I like the owner personally, and so I brought a couple and handed them out to buddies of mine. One of whom is a big time Tatawahe guy, not really a Connecticut type of smoker. And all of them came back and said, "When is this hitting the shelf? We will buy a box right now." And I know you smoked that cigar. I thought it was – I haven't smoked the Casa Fernandez. I have one, but I haven't smoked it. And um, But I thought when you're talking not your father's Connecticut, that to me was the the one that I was like, wow, hey, this wasn't what I was expecting. No, but Paul liked that one. Paul was big into that one. He, he We both liked that cigar a lot. Um, I liked the Panatella. I think he was more on the Corona end of that, the short Corona, but I liked the short Panatella on that one. I'm with uh, you. Yeah. Yeah, I think he, I think Robert uh, knocked that one out of the park with AJ, um, working with that one. I think it was a really good cigar. Yeah, I think that's what the New World probably should have been. Totally agree. Um, yeah, the, the New World was, was a U.S. Connecticut, though. Yes. 
Um, and U.S. Connecticut's kind of a funny wrapper. I think to work with it, it tends to be much more bitter. It doesn't have the sweetness of the Ecuadorian one. Um, so I think they were going, and I think they were going for an ext- a much more milder cigar too with that New World Connecticut. I think they were, but I think what what you would want from an AJ cigar is what you get out of the the Southern draw. You know? Oh, totally agree. Totally agree. So my last cigar. Is this your cigar to show, or are you gonna reveal it afterwards? No, nah, you want me to do it afterwards? Cause uh, well, do a cigar, and then um, we'll, we'll re- yeah, then we'll reveal what our cigar of the show was. All right, the last one I got was the uh, Matilde, the uh, the box press. Yes, um, the uh, Quadrata or whatever. Now I smoked it before the show, and I liked it. Um, I'm not, you know, it was. I admit I smoked it when I was heading out to uh, West. So, but I, I did like it a lot. So let me hear your thoughts. Well, it wasn't the Oscura. It wasn't the, wow, holy crap, I have to get a box of these. But it was, uh, it was a damn good cigar, and it fills the space. It's a, a medium, full, medium, medium full. Um, you know, it has the, um, the Ecuadorian wrapper, uh, Dominican binder, Dominican Nicaraguan filler. Um, I think it's coming in three or four sizes, three sizes. And um, reasonable price point, just like the other Matilde cigars. And I think what uh, Jose Sejas and Enrique Sejas have done with that brand is uh, pretty impressive. I agree. I mean, I found it somewhere in between the Renaissance and the Oscura in terms of profile. You know, so it was that medium plus. Yeah, I think it fits the hole that was there. Yeah. And what size did you smoke again? Uh, I smoked the, it would have been the Robusto. Okay. I smoked the Toro. I thought it was very good. I enjoyed it. Yep. Yep. No, I did too. I think uh, they're doing some great work. They're making that one now at Hochi Blanco. Which, yeah. Uh, yeah. So they moved their production over to Hochi Blanco's factory. Okay. So, Cigar of the Show Coop. Okay. So, um... This goes back to the circle bar. Um, I'm in the circle bar, and I see Robert Caldwell, um, who, call, if you know Caldwell, he's a ball buster, and that's why I like him. Yeah. And he apparently, well, I had wrote something a few weeks ago, um, and I had a, I had a pretty big typo. Um, he had formed a distribution company with Tony Bellotto, uh for Tony Bellotto stuff um, called uh, Down and Under. Except I called it down and out. So, and he caught it and he busted my balls on it. It was all good and obviously we fixed it. So he goes, he sees me and he goes, ah, he, he, he goes, oh, you're coming to hang out with us uh, down and out guys, right? So, I, you know, and he goes, oh, you know, hey, I'm really sorry. You know, I'm trying to be, he goes, ah, I'm just kidding you. So he goes, he hands, he goes, I'm going to give you a really special cigar. He hands me this cigar. Um, I had not seen this cigar in, in any of the pre release stuff. Um, it is called the, uh, Eastern standard dos firmas, which everyone's calling the Caldwell signature. Um, I go off to smoke this cigar, um, in my smoking room upstairs. Um, I, this cigar blew me away how good it was. I go downstairs. Robert's not there. Right. About an hour later, Robert comes back. He, I, I go, Robert, man. He goes, did you smoke it? I said, holy cow. I said, this was day one of the show. I said, this is the front runner. And he's like, isn't that the shit? He's like, yeah. he's like, I love this cigar. And normally he won't say he loves his own cigars. He's, and this is a cigar that basically he told me um, it was a cigar by William Ventura. It was kind of his cigar he's had. He gave it to Robert um, to use on the project. They're basically using a, um, a they're using a, uh, it's basically they're using, I guess, a special Connecticut wrapper on this thing. Um, it's different than the one on the Eastern Standard. Um, the, I smoked the Robusto, which is the, um, I want to I'm sorry. Yeah, what was it's a robusto ish size, I guess. It's um it's like four and seven eighths by forty. So it's more of a corona size. Um this was the cigar of the show. Uh hands down. Um a lot of people he gave me this cigar. I don't think he was handing out a lot of samples of it. 
But this is a cigar. If you like Caldwell, you're going to love this cigar. Uh, if you have been ambiguous about Caldwell cigars, you need to give this cigar a try. Um, he knocked it out of the park with this cigar. Well, my cigar of the show, I mean, I already mentioned, but I honestly got to say, I think it was a tie, which was either the Yamasa or the uh, Venganza. Now, when I, I saw you, you had mentioned Venganza was the one in the, uh, that, that's what I thought I it was. a little towards that. I think uh, it was just a friggin' great cigar. You know, it was one that, that I wanted to keep smoking. I was a little disappointed when it was over. Um, I love when you get that feeling when you're smoking a cigar where you're smoking it and you're like, man, I, I, I don't want this to end. I, I want to have another one. Uh, the Matilde Oscura was kind of that way for me last year. Uh, I had that with the Yamasa. I, both of them uh, I thought were phenomenal cigars and weren't really on the radar going into the show. And that tends to, to be a good sign when I think something is a great cigar and it wasn't on the radar headed into the show. Totally, yeah, I mean... Totally agree. I mean, a lot of these weren't on my radar. I mean, Yamasa was. I had had it. Um, I'm I'm really curious if you smoke the pyramid in that size, what you're going to think of that, or the Bellicoso. I'm really curious because I think that Yam, Yamasa blend works better in the bigger sizes. I, I think it's a better cigar with those. Um, I did smoke it in that size. I do think the bigger sizes work, which is why I like the Toro. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I would... Um, I, I'd agree with you on on that. I like I like kind of like that approach on that, but um, that doesn't mean it's my cigar of the year either. Caldwell cigar. I mean, when I go through a cigar of the year, there's much more that goes into that. It's over time how it performs. I got to have accessibility to the cigar. Um, but you know, uh, that was a, that. I mean, folks, I would incur, I'm really curious if folks get their hands on that Caldwell signature. Uh, give us some feedback on that, or, or even the Yamasa. Yamasa is a great cigar as well. I mean, I'm, I'm there with you on the Cigar of the Year thing. Um, you know, last year, I would say the Matilde Oscura was the Cigar of the Show. Our Cigar of the Year was uh, the Warp Skyflower. And even the El Wednesday was number two, and uh, Southern Draw had the number three spot. Because one of the things I look at is how often I smoke something. How often do I want to smoke? And no. any cigar that Southern Draw could do was one I smoked probably the most last year. Yeah, I mean, it was interesting with me. Matilde Oscuro was my number three last year. Um, number two was the Debonair Maduro uh, 33rd Degree, which is an A-size. It's the best A-size cigar I've had to date. And the Padron 50th Maduro, which was a, you know, obviously a very special cigar. I, I bought quite a few of those, um, That was uh, including paying $106 for one of them. Um, the other ones I got at a better price, but yeah. So, I mean... It doesn't mean necessarily, I mean, you could get these cigars back and, and you just don't know what they're going to be like. But th this is at least our initial impressions out of the show. Yeah. Um, by the way, on the A size cigar, if you ever find a Paul Gamarian 15th anniversary, that is a phenomenal A size cigar. We are, you know, I've not smoked that size, but Paul Esadorian and I are big. We cover quite a bit of Paul Gamarian on that cigar on, on the show, probably more than any other podcast. Um, and I, 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 ha I know that's a bucket list I want to try. If you haven't smoked Paul Garmerian's 25th anniversary, you need to smoke that one. Yeah. That's a cigar to your candidate in my book right now. Um, it's, it's that good. Oh, I love their cigars. I think they're one of the, I think they might be the best least known cigar company. We, we have, yeah. I mean, if folks go look on our archives on our Stogie feed, uh, Cigar Coop, we don't have quite as much as Paul Gamarian because this was really a Stogie Geeks brand that from when I joined the Stogie Geeks folks, they kind of educated me on Paul Gamarian and they reviewed a lot of that. I don't think the opposite of the A size is out on the Stogie feed, but knowing as the door. I don't even know if you can find that size anymore. I, I, that's why I, it wasn't on my, it's not something that's coming to my radar that I've even smoked it, but that uh, the anniversary blend is incredible. I bought several, uh, I, I bought a box of them from uh, Angry Moon in Palm Beach Gardens. Wow. And then came back and found they had some uh, in, in the coffins and ended up having to buy some coffins because, oh, that was a great cigar. 
you know, I recently smoked the Epernay in a coffin. It was very good. It's like a twenty-five dollar coffin, but <laughs> but it was very good. Uh, and and Mother's it, Labor's you limited edition coffin, huh? <laughs> no, no, or yeah, uh, I I have to smoke my Labor's you. I have it. Um, I did now, smoke it. There is a cigar that could be the cigar of the show. I have not smoked it yet. And forty-five. It would be the uh, the La Aurora Preferidos. Oh, the double, double barrel. Barrels. I I'm, yeah, I haven't smoked it. Preferidos fan. What's your favorite? We cover a lot of La Aurora in the show. What's your favorite one? The uh, Ruby. The really, old, especially if you get it back. The, if, the, if you the, get it before Miami was the distributor, back when it had um, no barcode on the tube. I at one point had a humidor with about two hundred and fifty of that cigar. Wow. That was, that was, uh, I, I think my 10 year class reunion from high school, I sat and smoked maybe four or five of those that night. Um, just so I didn't have to deal with people. Uh, that's a great cigar. I also like the diamond, the, the broad leaf. Have you ever had some of the offshoots of the, of the diamond? Um, they did a Gordo size of that for the mid Atlantic called Chico's choice. It was named after one of the reps. That that is one of the most powerful. That black diamond in in that Chico's Choice Gordo size, it's one of the strongest cigars I've ever had at a La Aurora. It, it, I, I I like the Corona sizes. Yeah. Which now they're releasing nationwide. Yep. Originally they were an Atlantic Coast exclusive. Mm -hmm. um, I really like those, but I'm also a Lancero guy now. Uh, thanks, Jorge. Um, but because because they were were that uh, petite Corona, smaller ring gauge, and just all of those were great. In fact, on our site, uh, I did the review of those all in one big piece so you can see the whole set and how they all compare. Uh, once in a great while, I'll do something like that with the Mbombe Mora so you can compare every Batola. Yeah, you've done a great... I mean, I, gotta give you, I meant to mention that at the beginning of the show. The, the verticals you've done uh, have been excellent. They're, 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 it's great work. Um, and a lot of us don't do verticals. And we've done a few of them on Stogie Geeks, but... They are time consuming and it's a lot of work, so I know it goes into that certainly. Um it's great work. Hey, I just thought of my wish list for Jorge's H Town. Yeah. The La Aurora Diamond Lancero. Get on uh, Jorge. Tell him to get uh, on it. Well, he's watching, so I'm pretty sure he just heard it, you know. Yeah, go call call up call up Guillermo. Uh, I would agree that that'd be one I'd like. I, to. I am really curious to see it because that's a great that blend's just been great in every size. So I'm really curious to see what they could do with the Lancero on that. Uh, I do think he has a the Ecuador Lancero. I think they did do that one in the Lancero. Okay. They've done uh, it. They've done them it. Them. It's not in H-Town. It's something they did. Right, right. And because it's Stogies, there's a ton of them here. Um, wow. <laughs> you know, if something, in the, if something good in a Lancero, I mean, I, I tend to, at the show, text Jorge pictures of Lanceros. And... He's like, why are you texting me this? And I'm like, it's a Lancero. He's like, well, how do I know it's any good? Um, you know, uh, then there's some that are just, I, I hope he gets in. The Protocol Lancero is one of those. That, um, that wow. I mean, you got to take it off to, the, to those guys, Juan and Bill. That Lancero is a legit cigar. Well, I think, you know, uh, the Lazona Lancero making um, got its practice with the uh, Laranja, and that was a I mean, that's, but, uh, yeah, there's a couple I'd love to see as H towns. Some of them I don't think will ever happen. You know, there's some small brands that you're like, oh, I'd love to try this in a Lancero. Um, but they're just so small or so new. Um, I don't know if they'd sell. No, I, I don't, I don't know either. Um, you know, I thought you know, about some warp stuff. I'd love to see in a Lancero. Um, there's a lot of the warp stuff I'd love to see in a Lancero. Although, oddly, the, the Eloso, the Lancero, I'm not a huge fan of. I like the uh, Torpedo. It's a different blend. They use in San Andreas on, on the, on the on Lancero. Yeah. Now, the warp collaboration they did with um, Casa Fernandez this year, they released a Lancero with that. Yeah. The follow-up to Futuro. Um, you, know, I, you know, a couple of other cigars that I had off the trade show floor that I haven't smoked. Um, J.C. Newman's Black Diamond is, is, which I thought was going to be a very hot cigar at the show, and I think it was. 
Uh, it just doesn't get a lot of talk with the online community. They've worked on that Black Diamond blend for a long time. I have the cigar. I'm going to smoke it. It was I was going to wait for my palate to clean out on that. So I'm certainly, uh, you know, that's certainly a cigar in my book that is, you know, worthy. I want to see what they they can do as far as that goes. Um, some of the new EPC cigars, um, the, the Encore, the Dusk um, by Ernesto Perez Carrillo, I want to see what what those what those are going to be like as well. Um, I would say there's a couple I haven't smoked that I'm excited about, and there's a few that I, I did get to smoke. One I was somewhat impressed with was the, uh, granted I'd smoked a couple other cigars, but the uh, Exodus Toronto. Uh I'm not a huge fan of the packaging. We all know it looks like Camacho. But the Exodus, they got away, I think the Exodus one, they got away from that somewhat. A little bit. And I think the, the band's still a little Camacho-esque. Um, but I think as a, a cigar, that was a pretty decent cigar, especially for what you're expecting from General. And, and um, you know, the HR, the blue. Um, that was a good cigar. I had that. Yeah, that should have been on my list. That was a very good cigar. There's a couple cigars out of a company nobody's ever heard of. Uh, got, the owner's a Mets fan, so I like him. Uh, Sacrifolium. Sacrifolium. I, I, we covered some pre-release stuff with that on Coop. They had some good cigars. Um, the new Avo. I just smoked it. Very good. good. The uh, Pagata. And, uh, you know, there was, there was a little here and there. Uh, you know, one that surprised me, the Gurkha Heritage uh, Maduro. I have that. I haven't smoked it. You know, I'm not a huge Gurkha fan. There's some I like, some I don't. Most of them I don't. That one I, I really liked. Um, you know, I smoked a couple of those throughout the course of the show. Their new marketing guy, Eddie Guerra, um, nice. well, I'm real impressed with him. I think he's got a real, real long career in this industry. I mean, you know, he has been in this industry a while. Box set they did. Yeah. Uh, where you, each one is meant to be paired with a different beverage because – Hey, one of the things I instituted when I took over Toasted Foot was there's a little pairing section on each. Yep. This goes well with this, or this would go well with that. And um, that box set, I'm actually interested to try and, and see how that actually works and if it actually does pair well with those things. No, I agree. I agree. Um, you know, I, I'm curious. There's a couple of cigars they made you seem like they're marketing, but... I'm really curious to see the Romeo Nicaragua 505. Um, they did a Romeo or RYJ Nicaraguan Puro a few years ago. It wasn't a big hit. Um, I think this cigar I'm, I'm real curious about by Altidus. With General, um, Dunhill came out with a Maduro. I've, I've been very impressed with what's coming out of Dunhill over uh, the last few years. Um, they've done some good stuff, and so I'm curious about um, what that Maduro is going to do. And then the, the, obviously Fuente got the, they weren't giving samples out of the ten year, uh, the Opus X. Uh, excuse me, yeah, the Opus X anniversary cigar. Very 20 anniversary, twenty anniversary. I'm sorry. That Dunhill, I'm very excited about. That was uh, Dunhill, the Age Cabrera's and the White Tube. That was the first cigar I ever smoked. I actually bought it from Stogies when Stogies was a little hole in the wall, and. Uh, it was, I was my 18th birthday. It was like 20 bucks and it came in a white tube. It had to be good, uh, you know, and it actually wasn't bad. And uh, although I smoked one recently that was that old and it had a little too much age on it. Yep. Uh, but I, I like what Dunhill's been doing. Me too. Uh, that Selection Suprema is probably going to be on my top 20 list this year. Uh, that was really good. Oh, Drew Estate. I mean, Willie Herrera is uh, the Herrera still in Miami. I'm obviously very curious the whole story with that project, as well as the the Swamp Dragon cigars. Um, I did hear that the Herrera Esteli Miami is a phenomenal cigar. So. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's there's heritage there, um, and and I'm, I am curious about Candela and Fire Cure. It, it's enough. To, I want to try it. I'm not, you know, and and maybe surprised. I think, and I think that's enough for a lot of people to to go and take a chance on that cigar. I think people will try it. Well, hey, I was curious about the peak cured hammer and sickle last year. Uh, it wasn't they, quite what I was hoping it was, but you know. Well, they came out with the they came out with a higher percentage of the peat. They went twenty five. I think they went very conservative with that. I think that fifty is going to take it up a notch. I do have the fifties. I'm I'm going to smoke them here very soon. Um, 
we'll see how that turns out. I'm Scottish, so I'm very big into that. Yeah, and, and they're one of the booths I missed this year, and they've been very, very good to the show, and I'll be definitely reaching out to them uh, for a Stogie Geeks appearance. So they're one of the people I definitely you know, I really feel bad I didn't get to. Some of the booths were just not in the best locations either. Yeah, some were just hard to get to. Um, that one was nice because, uh, like Loomis said, they have couches. Yeah. And they had nice, plush, white couches, and uh, they were close to the dictator booth where you could get some liquor. So. Yep. <laughs> uh, PDR, I got to say this, they have a, a new uh, Connecticut Reserve cigar coming out. Um, looks stunning. The, the Connecticut Reserve Broadleaf was um, an excellent cigar. This is a, a lighter shade of a Connecticut uh, that they're coming out, but it's not Connecticut shade either. So definitely check that one out. PDR had a lot of stuff this year at the show they brought. A lot so, of people had a lot of stuff. I mean, a lot of the stuff is, you know... Alec Bradley, Alec, Bradley had, Alec Bradley had nothing. Well, no. I, now, I mean, they had nothing now. I had room... I, yeah, see, and there are a lot of companies that did that, but Alec Bradley is the only one I had heard of at the show, but since I've heard of plenty of others, where... Alec Bradley had upteen million releases coming out that are for the next several years. You know, we'll, we'll put some with you now. And, and that's then, what I'm talking oh. about. That's why we're going to see, okay, but my point, we're going to see new product. And that, that was the only company I had heard about at the show that had done that. They had like, I think somebody at the show had told me it was like 50 releases. And I think it was, a, I'm going to give Alec Bradley credit. I heard Alan Rubin on Kiss My Ass Radio say before the regulations came he was not releasing anything at the show this year he was going to focus on fixing some of the core brands yeah there was nothing new at the show no but there will be stuff there There will be in the future there's new stuff there's new stuff out there and that's where you'll still like we'll still be getting press releases and these things will continue at least for the next couple of years when we get to 2018 19 that's when I'm a lot more concerned. Yeah. Anyway, um, let, let me uh, let me kind of first tell about the contest. Um, two five packs. Uh, I will give out an IPCBR. Coming up in an hour. Yep, I will give up an IPCBR an IPCBR sampler five pack with a Stogie Geeks T-shirt. Um, here's what you need to do: send an email to the show at stogiegeeks.com. In that email, tell me – you have to give me a few pieces of information. First of all, tell me the name of the bar that uh, would not allow my backpack uh, to come into. Um, if you give me the hotel name, I'll, I'll accept that as well. You must include your T-shirt size. Three things. Your T-shirt size, your mailing address, including your full name, and you must certify that you are over 18 years old. I need all this information in the email because I have to get this out, and there's not a lot of time to go back and forth with email. Um, given that the deadline is next week, things happen during the week, and I, I don't want that to be delayed. So I'll pick the prize tomorrow night. Um, so And then what, it's really going to be for the live audience, but if it happens to be by the end of tomorrow night, and it's out there, it's out there. Um, so remember the show at stogiegeeks.com. Uh, tell me the name of the bar or the hotel that wouldn't let my backpack in. Anyway, JD, uh, appreciate it. Uh, we'll have to have you back for sure when Paul's here, and you can talk Paul Gamari and, and La Aurora too. I think you guys will really hit it off. Um, but again, thanks. This was uh, great. And check out uh, JD. Where can they find you? Uh, Toastofoot.com. Thanks for having me on, Coop. I mean, it's uh, it's always fun BSing with you about cigars. You know, nobody knows more than you do. No, you, you offer a lot, so I appreciate it. It's a great discussion. That concludes episode 195 of the Stogie Geeks. You don't want to miss episode 196. Steve Saka will be our guest, and there's a good chance he's going to be in the studio. Um, so stay tuned next week, 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Um, and be sure to check out Cigar Coop for all the news and reviews, as well as Stogie Geeks Shorts and Stogie Geeks News. Thanks, everybody.